Hi everyone, this is EK from EK Gorman Designs. I'm slipping in today to show you a Copic coloring from we're using this Yeti to Party stamp set from Crafting Desert Divas. I thought today I'd go ahead and show my process of how I build a scene um, since I use so many of these Yeti stamps. I have a tendency of stamping out on a scratch piece of paper my scene, not worrying at all what overlaps, and then using that as a guide within my MISTI to build my scene. As you can see, I pre cut out all my masks and I would lay down the original stamp set, line up my stamps with it, get it hooked up onto my MISTI and then lay down my masks once the images was, was stamped. Um, for me this really works the best just having a game plan prior to starting the scene building and this is the best part of any stamping process the moment you get to pull off the masks. Um, like a crazy person, I thought I could freehand the table that the cupcakes are sitting on. That I cannot do, so I pulled out my ruler and pr appropriately drew in all the lines for the table. Uh, every once in a while I go nuts and think I can freehand straight lines. I cannot freehand straight lines. So here's where we start the coloring. Um, I wanted the Yetis to be kind of an off-white, so I decided to use my uh, gray, warm gray Copics to build. They're gonna look really, really gray until I start building in other colors behind the Yetis. All four of the Yetis, I use the same combination of Copic markers. Now I will tell you, I originally started off thinking I wanted their fur to be smooth, so you're gonna see me badly color in some shadows here in the beginning, and then I go back in and add some fluffiness within their fur line. I apologize, I'm really trying to learn to color so you can see me coloring, but I'm still getting in the place where my hand is blocking the camera from what I'm doing. Um, especially with moments of like this where I'm adding shadows and wiggle lines, I tend to use just the very tip of my marker, and yeah, you can't see what I'm doing. Here I've made a conscious effort to really like try to pull back. I'm only slightly better. But you can see from the two that are showing where um, I've dropped in this really dark shadow. Now I'm going to warn you, I forget to do this third Yeti's legs for quite some time. I know it's going to drive some people absolutely crazy that his legs haven't been shadowed in. I promise I eventually get back to it. Uh, and yes, I dropped in, I don't normally do this, I usually go from lightest to the very darkest shadow color and then work back to the lightest. But because I wanted the Yetis to kind of come off white, I started with my darkest Yeti, uh, my darkest Yeti color, whatever. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm apparently not very smart this morning. I started with my darkest shadow color on the Yetis and then went back in um, using the mid-tone and then blended it out with the light tone. Like I said, originally, right now, without any other color on the card, they look really, really gray. But when I pop in some bright colors into the birthday stuff, you'll see that that gray tone kind of washes out and they have that more off-white color that I was going for. And you'll notice I leave actual parts of the Yeti colorless. I don't put any Copics onto it. Um, I want, oh, oh, for all of you who've been panicking about his feet, I've gone back in and added the color to his legs. Uh, I know it just drives people crazy when you miss something. They're like, ah, but you forgot, you forgot to color in that section. Yeah, I do this a lot. I miss, like his hand, you'll notice I haven't, the hand holding the balloons. I've sort of missed it and forgotten it. Um, yeah, I eventually catch up to myself. If, when you've got a lot of different images, especially for those of you who don't normally color big scenes, there's so many different lines, sometimes you miss stuff. Um, you eventually catch up. Here's the W00 that I'm using to blend out the last of the color. And you'll see, again, like they're going to look gray, but they eventually kind of appear white. Now, I'm, I wanted their faces and their little paw feet and their claws and their horns to be darker than their fur. So I pulled out one step darker, or I guess two steps, because I, I only own the odd warm grays. So my shadow on their fur was the W3, but my shadows for their faces starts with the W5. I wanted to go just a little bit darker and leave zero white cardstock behind. Um, somebody asked the other day what I what ink I use. I use Memento Tuxedo Black just because it's the first one I started off with, and I've always I've never had a problem with it, so I've never ventured out to any other 
Copic Friendly inks. I figured if it's not broken, don't fix it. And I've always been really, really happy with this Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Uh, I, I don't get smears with it at all. Um, and here we go with me fiddling with this, these dark shadows on their face. I was kind of debating for a long time whether their teeth would leave shadows, and in the end I was like, that's it, the teeth are leaving shadows. We're going to give them really thingy, snarly tooths. I didn't do any blending, for those of you wondering, on their horns. I went ahead and just filled them in with that W5 marker all the way. I figured they're so small and there's so much detail on those horns, I didn't need to worry about blending them. Um, with their faces, I took that mid-tone across most of their face, because again, I wanted their little, their little faces to be kind of a darker gray with their white shadowed fur. I think you're able to tell now, now that I'm starting to get these dark shadows onto their face, their fur is starting to look a little bit more white with some good shadows. I will tell you, today I, uh, I decided to do this birthday themed card because my, my horrible, awful, terrible, I can't believe I'm having to celebrate it again, birthday is tomorrow. And, uh... I hate birthdays. I hate my birthday. I'm getting old and I don't want I don't want birthdays anymore. I am now officially forever 29. It has confused my child, children that I don't age. They think I'm perpetually 29. But I figured if I was going to make a card today, I was going to make myself my own little birthday card. And the thing about birthdays, while I don't particularly enjoy them, what I do enjoy is the fact that friends reach out to say hi. Friends you haven't necessarily talked talk to in a while reach out to say hi, which thus makes the sentiment of the stamp set perfect. Life is a cupcake, beasties are the sea, uh, the sprinkles. And many of my friends are beasties and they know that, I'm not offending them. I, uh, I, I decided with the background party supplies I was going to use three or four colors. I was going to go with a purple and a red violet and then I was going to go with a green and a yellow green. So I'm working with two colors on the color wheel next to each other and then colors are kind of across the way from each other on the color wheel, thus the color scheme worked. Um, you can't see it, but that piece of craft cardstock that had the original scene stamped out on it, I marked out all the colors I was going to use and what was going to be what color in advance so I wouldn't accidentally have two of the same color balloons right next to each other or two of the same color somethings right next to each other. So I did pre-plan where my colors go. For those of you that know me, I don't redo cards. I do them once. If I make a mistake, I figure out how to make that mistake work. Or I own up to the fact there is a mistake and I call it, call it out for what exactly it is. But I don't redo cards. I don't make a card, mess up, and then reshoot the whole thing. Any mistakes I make, I make work. Because, frankly, with three kids, I don't have the time to reshoot anything. I'm moving on to the yellow colors here. Um, and again, like I said, on that craft sheet, I've pre-marked out everything so I know where I'm going and I'm not having to think. On these balloons, when I colored them, I tried to leave a little white highlight in all of them, and you're going to notice I fail miserably on all six balloons leaving this little white highlight. Um, I did not get my shape or form that I like to get when doing a balloon, and I don't know why. I normally, when I do balloons, I consciously, like, draw in thin lines so you can see through the balloons and I don't know what was going on here but I completely failed to do that today like so the balloons apparently today at this party are opaque you can't see through them and everybody's just going to have to accept that these are 100% opaque balloons you're not going to see through them again I only do these things once I don't I don't go back and correct mistakes and be like, ah, I learned. No, just the next project, whatever I learned from messing up on this one, I apply to my next project. Um, by the way, I made this birthday card for me and one of my kids proceeded to steal it and give it to one of their girlfriends. Um, so a nine-year-old is now celebrating with my birthday card. It happens a lot in my house. I'll make a card, I'll set it out for usually my use. And a kid will swoop in and kidnap it for their personal needs. But it's one of the nice things about being a card maker. You always have cards lying around and people who love you know that they can come steal them. A.K.A. my family and friends. 
uh, we just moved into a new house and all the neighbors have discovered I have greeting cards lying all over my house. And I had somebody show up the other day and was like, I need a card for my mother-in-law's birthday. Can I please, 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 please go through your stock? I need to get it out in the mail in like the next 10 minutes. I was like, come here. These are my mother-in-law cards. Cause yes, I have a mother-in-law collection. Stuff that's really pretty and floral. Ironically, it's not stuff I send to my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law enjoys the good punny birthday cards, so she gets those. Um, I came in, I think, with what I... It's my favorite yellow-green combination. Um, I think it, for a lot of people it's kind of a weird combination. But to me, it's got the best combination. I love that 03, YG03, YG06, YG17. I wish... I don't... I hear a lot of people complain about the purple combinations, Copics, like that there isn't a really good combination. For me, this like light green color, bright, I'm, I'm looking for like a great bright green color combination and I just haven't found it. The other place I really struggle with color combinations is for bright pinks. I don't want them to be neon. I want them to be muted and yet bold. And for some reason I'm still struggling to find a great pink combination. I don't know. This might, this one, this RV34, RV17, RV19 might be what I'm looking for. It still doesn't blend as well as I want it to. If anybody has any great, like not neon pink, but bold, bright colors, and they love their pink combinations, like shoot it to me. I am looking for one. I, I keep searching for a new pink combination and I'm, I'm just coming up short. Um, I don't know. The pinks bother me. I end up using R1 or R81, R83, and R85 most of the time. And it's just not bright enough, but it's such a great blend. Uh, this one's okay. The Oh, I did get the highlights in the pink balloons, though, and I promptly accidentally cover colored right over them when I blended it out with this RB34. Because that's the life. It happens more often than not. Than, uh, than you'll... Than you'll uh, except and I've got almost everything so see this time I didn't try to freehand draw the floor no no I pulled the ruler out right away because I learned from my mistakes um, I wanted a nice strong floor because I knew I was gonna leave the top of this card white and yeah just I was like you know what I'm, I'm gonna draw the line for the, the, the ground like the horizon line you will laugh you don't really know that there it is. I go away and I come back. My I realized this E21 marker was drying out and I stopped right in the middle of coloring it to refill the marker and make it significantly juicier. Um, I keep my refills, pre there it is. That's, that's the cut in which I filled my marker. So you'll notice now how much smoother the ink is going on and how less streaky it seems. I keep my refills really close on hand. I don't have all the refills. I have the refills of, like, I order them when I dis discover I need them. Um, I tend to have more light colors. I tend to lay down a lot more ink in the ones and twos and three zones than I do in the higher numbers. So I haven't had to buy any, like, co uh, Copic markers ending in a nine. But I keep my refills right on hand. I don't think it's a big deal refilling them. I probably don't ever refill them enough. Uh, I probably don't put enough ink into them when I do refill them, but I just keep my ref my inkers right right in my work zone. So if something needs it, I just do it right then and there. Um, oh, and if anybody's wondering why I walked away and came back here with the R25, my husband had a prior a very necessary emergency in which I needed to go help him find socks or something. Um, I wish that uh, there's, there's a time I detach the audio when I film and delete it completely and then lay over sound at some point I'm going to have to like play snippets of sound of what people are shouting at me while I'm late, uh, making these videos. Cause usually every member of my family plus the dog comes in and starts asking questions like, where are my socks? Have you seen a lunchbox? Um, what are we having for dinner? That, that's the big one. Like, everybody in my house always seems to need to know what we're having for dinner at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I, uh, I colored the wood grain here. 
Oh, this, okay, I'm trying something. This is a total experiment. I haven't decided if it worked or not. When I lay down a wood floor like I'm doing in this card, I'm always like, where do I put the shadow and when do I put the shadow in? So today I'm trying to lay down the shadow before I blend out the floor. So I'm coming in with a little of the N2 and N0, laying down the shadows under the Yetis, and then coming back in and blending out my wood floor. Like I said, I'm not certain this worked. I'm still in a great debate of when you drop the shadows on the floor and when you highly color in the floor like I've done here. Um, at least this one you can see the floor. Last time I experimented, it wasn't there. I decided to introduce a whole new color for the tablecloth because I really wanted the Yetis to pop in front of it. And you'll notice finally they're really looking white because of all the color laid around them. Um, but no, I, I went with this teal combination to offset everything else. I wish I could say these were all my favorite colors. They're not. None, if, if I have um, birthday decorations revolving around my favorite colors, it's like a really pale lavender, a really dark olive green, and black balloons, which are not fun party decorations at all. Those would be my favorite colors, if you're wondering, is black and lavender and really dark olive green. Um, I trimmed the card up just a little bit so that it has a nice white border. I put it onto the cardstock. And there you go. That's my coloring. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, again, this is the Yeti to Party set from Craft Crafting Desert Divas. And thank you for everybody who's wishing me a happy birthday.